Hello, everybody. This is Kate Strashny from Dedicated. I am here with Sean Kask, Chief AI Strategy Officer at SAP. Sean, how are you doing today? Great. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. I'm really excited that we have a few minutes to chat. And one of the first questions I have for you is, let's define what is an AI agent and then tell me what is an agent when it comes to SAP? Yeah, great. Good question because agents are very popular at the moment, right? So a very uh, hype, hype topic. So if you want to just understand what an agent is, you have to go to the textbook from Russell Norvig, okay? which is like the classic textbook in AI since the last 30 years. And literally the first line on the first page says AI is the study of intelligent agents that perceive the environment and can act upon it. Okay. And, you know, additionally, they can learn with time. Yeah? And that's a very useful concept for understanding how computers can work with the environment, but it's also very broad, right? So it covers everything. So, you know, a classification engine. So if I put a, a cat picture classifier on my Twitter feed and tell it to send me a notification every time it sees a cat picture, right? That's, that's an agent, right? Mm -hmm. What's happened over the past year or so is a new breed of agents is becoming feasible. So because of these large language models are, are having more and more capabilities to reason, right? Now we have these advanced AI agents, okay? And that's what we're interested in SAP. So these kind of agents, you basically give them a goal to solve and some, some guardrails. So what systems should they be able to access? You know, what, what, are, what are some steps that they might take? And the agents are then able to autonomously plan out how they're gonna solve that problem, iteratively try to solve it, reflect on their progress, access various tools along the way, and even potentially collaborate with other agents and humans towards reaching that goal. And that is what is interesting because that unlocks automation in a long tail of use cases that until now are you know, proven pretty impervious to automation because they tend to be very like diverse uh, type of use cases. Yeah, you know, when it comes to use cases, one of my favorites is customer service. And I know back in the day when we used to call these hotlines, hey, I need help. And all of these automated responses would start like press one for right. this, press two. And you just start saying, I need an agent. I need an agent when we meant a real human, human. person. Yeah. But I think now if a human picks up, we're just going to say, hey, I need an agent, like an AI agent who can actually <laughs> just solve this problem much yeah. quicker, get the context because they have all of that data that a human might exactly. not. Exactly. But, but those are the exact kind of use cases where this new breed of advanced AI agents help, right? So something like dispute management. Right. Okay, so you phone a customer service line or you send an email because you say my order was missing something or it came damaged or you overcharged me or these kind of disputes, right? And that might come in a system, it might come in an email, maybe someone writes a letter and a human then needs to evaluate that and say, okay, what is the nature of the dispute? Is that correct or not? I might need to look into an email, into a CRM system, what order was sent, right? All these different systems I might need to ask a colleague and they do this investigation and then they come to some a resolution where they're going to propose something back to solve that, right? Mm -hmm. And that process is inherently very messy and iterative, right? And that's what these AI agents can, can, can help with because they can classify what kind of dispute this is. Let me look in this different system here and there and make a proposal to the end user. Right. And so we'll have different agents for different departments, right? We'll have human capital agents, supply chain management agents, yes. accounting agents. Yes. Is there a world where all of these agents are collaborating together? And tell me how this works at SAP. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and again, so, so you brought up the different kinds of agents, right? You know, we don't want to release thousands and thousands and thousands of agents. Okay. We want Someone to has to manage the agents. Exactly. Right? We want to focus on agents that are scoped around clearly defined user personas and user roles, because as soon as you do that, it's very clear what the scope of the agent is and how they, sh who they should help. Right. And so, yes, you know, we might have a dispute ma uh, management agent. We might have a, a customer support agent. We might have a supply planning agent. Okay with their clearly defined scopes and what agents particularly help with is, are these problems that span different departments and different business yeah. units. Okay. And to do that, they need to have some kind of agent, agent collaboration and communication in place. Right. So one agent might like, like humans would, right. Yeah. Let me call my friend in HR about this. Yeah. Yeah. They can communicate with each other and, and, and by doing that, break up the task along these like complex business processes. You know, yeah, that, that's a great point that they actually have to work together. And I think they might work together better than humans because they're not going to say, oh, I don't like this guy from HR. <laughs> Let me not call him, right? <laughs> yeah. They're going to actually collaborate. One of the last questions I have for you is why don't we want thousands and thousands of agents? 
I mean, I, I think it gets hard to manage, right? So, I mean, how many roles do you have in a company, right? You know, right. Like, like, like roles where, you know, people have one job, but can have multiple roles. Okay. And there, there might be a couple hundred, it might, might, might reach a thousand. Right. But right. it just starts to get hard to manage all of these things. So, so, and, and also if we start classifying all these really low level, like tasks and skills, which may have agentic properties, those are involved in it. But, you know, if, if we start calling those agents and trying to manage all of that, I think it's just a lot easier. <clears throat> makes a lot more sense to really focus these around personas. Mm -hmm. It's very, I mean, it makes sense logically. It's kind of like hiring people. How many people do we really need to do all the same things? Yes. I just see in the future that because companies are making it so easy to build your own agent, it kind of reminds me of the time when dashboard tools came mm -hmm. out and everyone created their own unique dashboard that maybe that had a different color or different one extra metric that you didn't have. But then you end up spending all this time and resources maintaining it and managing it and supervising it and R governance. RPA bots. Uh, exactly. Yes, yeah. exactly. So I think you're right. It's very smart to start with the exact use case you need and yeah. less is more. Yeah. I mean, we're, so we're, make, we're making announcements on availability of certain agents in the coming days. Um, this year, we'll, we plan around 20 or 30 by end of the year uh, to be released in things like dispute management, some of these, th these use cases that I mentioned. Um, but, you know, we do also allow the possibility um, for uh, customers and partners to build their own AI agents um, in uh, SCP Build, so through Jewel, which is our co-pilot. But that then also has in place, again, the governance, right? So, so you have at least like a list, right, of what the agents are, who's built them, right? What are they supposed to do? Mm -hmm. And allowing uh, the opportunity for them to interact with each other. Amazing. Well, you're right. The future is really exciting. I can't wait to see all those launches come through. If you just don't mind, tell the audience, where can they go to learn more about what you're doing at AI and SAP? Yeah, sure. So you can always go to SAP Discovery Center. That's a good resource. So this has learning journeys on it. It has lists of all the different use cases and services available linked to all the SAP help documentation. And you know, I'd also advertise my course that I <laughs> launched last year. So we have generative AI at SAP on saplearning.com. <laughs> Good to know. All right, all right, everybody, go ahead and check them out and make sure you follow SAP on all social media platforms. Thank you. Great. Thank you.